Okay, so I am going to, in this video, step you through um, these problems um, using mouse interactions and processing. And so the first thing I'm actually going to do is go and grab the skeleton code from my site. So I'm just going to click on this and select it all and go and put it in my processing sketch. So then I only have to fill in um, the spots. I don't have to write all of the function headings. Okay, so let's just do this. All right. So this first one says create a variable called ball x and another called ball y um, that should be able to contain decimals. So we mentioned that um, with processing, we'll, we'll use float as the type for decimals. So I'm going to go to the section that says declare any variables here, and I'm going to get right underneath the comment and just write float. Let's call them ball x and float ball y. Okay. So step two says use the setup function to make the canvas 255 by 255. So here I am inside setup and I'm going to make the size 255 by 255. Okay. And then it says set the background to white. So we make that as its background. And white is 255 or the maximum amount of light showing through. Okay. And then it says initialize ball X and ball Y so that the coordinate is exactly in the middle of the screen. So ball X. Um, like I said, processing maintains um, these variables automatically for you. And so it will know that the, um, the width of its own canvas is inside a variable called width. So I can just ask it to divide that by two to get halfway across. And similarly, there is a height variable automatically. So I can just do height divided by two for ball y, and then I think I'm done with that. Yes, I am. Okay. It says in the draw function, update the x coordinate by adding five to it. So my x coordinate is being saved in this ball x variable. So if I want to add five to it, I'll say ball x equals ball x plus five. Okay. And then draw a red circle with radius 10 at the coordinates represented by ball x and ball y. So if I want to draw a circle, I have to use the ellipse state uh, function. And I want it to be at my variable location, so ball x, ball y. And then it says radius of 10. So if I were going to get the width and the height of a circle with radius 10, um, that would be 20 across. So this will be 20 by 20. Okay. Um, let's try this out and see what it looks like so far. So let me play this guy. And so it has gone across the screen, and I think that maybe I forgot to make it red. Yes, I did forget to make it red. So let's do that. Let's make a fill. Remember, it's RGB, so the red uh, parameters first. Let's check that again. Okay, so now there's a red circle flying off the screen. All right. So now step D says, now instead of just adding 5 to ball X, first add 5 and then modulo by the width of the canvas. So if I go here and edit this so that I do my addition first, and then I say modulus width, let's see what effect that has. So my ball wraps around. The nice thing about modulo is you can make it sort of um, repeat a sequence over and over and over. So for our ball, when it hits the right-hand side, which would be at 255, and it modulos by 255, um, it actually wraps back around to zero and starts the whole sequence again. So my ball continuously wraps around the screen. Okay. Then we have a final step here. Go back above everything else you have added in draw and add a statement to repaint the background color to white. So that would be right here. This is above my code. I'm going to say background 255. I run this. And now since it's erasing the background, it looks like my single ball is animating around the screen over and over. All right, so that is problem one.